Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of Trailhead Explanation. In this video, we are going to cover unit use batch epix from the module asynchronous epix. Now in this unit's challenge, we will be creating a batch epix class that will be updating the lead records. So the field that we are going to update uh, using this batch class will be the lead source field. And we are also going to create the Epix test class that will have the 100% coverage for our batch Epix class. So let's quickly launch our trailer playground and go to developer console. And the Epix class name will be lead processor. So I'll just copy this name over here. We have to use the interface database.batchable. And we'll be using the query locator in the start method. Let's just go there. Open developer console. Just create new Apex class and lead processor. Now this is the basic uh, structure of our Apex class, but we have to change this basic structure as we are going to create the batch Apex class. So how we can do that? Now here, first of all, we have to add implements database dot batchable. And in this, brackets we have to specify s object now, now there are three methods in our batch epix class start execute and finish first of all every time start start method executes once we have received the data in uh, from our start method we move towards our execute method in that execute method once all the batches of records or all the records have been processed at the end the finish method works. It's not like that, that once one batch is executed, then the finish method, then it goes back to the uh, to execute the another batch, then finish method. Th this way it doesn't work. Some people have this misconception that this works. Finish method executes every time once uh, one batch of uh, records has been executed. It's not like that. Finish method execute at the very end once all the records have been executed. So let's move on. And here in this start method, we are going to use the query locator. So let's just see how we can do that. Public database dot query locator. There is another one that is uh, iTribble. Here you can use iTribble as well, but that but that's for API call or if you want to pre-process records before sending them to execute method. So we are not using that over here. We are using database.query locator and then and brackets inside that. Again, we are going to use database.batchable context. Give the variable name. Let's say it's BC, then opening and closing brackets of the method. We are getting some errors. It says execute and finish methods are missing. That's why uh, since we haven't created those two methods, it's giving this error. Now let's move on and create the rest of the two methods. Public void execute. Inside this as well, database dot batchable. context, variable name, and then here we are going to pass the records, which we'll be retrieving in the start method. So here let's label it as lead records, since we are going to fetch all the leads, opening and closing bracket of our execute method. So this is our execute, this is our start method. And now after that, there will be public void finish inside that we only have to place database dot batchable context and the variable name again opening and closing brackets of the method so this is the basic uh, structure of our batch epics class that we have created now let's move ahead and see what logic we have to implement in our epics class so here as per the challenge it says that execute method must update all lead records in the org with lead source value of dream force so in the uh, execute method uh, all the logic that we have to implement on our records that has to be placed all the logic has to be placed in the execute method so before we update all these records we have to pass those records in this variable leads records so how we can do that this method in this method we are going to do that and first of all we have to 
fetch the records. So let's say ID lead source from lead. This is our query. And here this method, the start method, uh, query locator method returns this query by using return database dot get query locator and in the curve brackets we have to place this and put this query in single inverted comma so this query will be returned from uh, using this start method and then it will be passed to the lead records so all the records that we have queried here will be passed in this variable lead records and then we are going to further loop here and update the lead source value. So using the for loop, uh, we are going to loop around these records which we have received from this query. It's in the lead record variable. So lead records that we are going to loop, opening and closing brackets. Now inside this, we have to update the lead source field by the value dream force. We are going to add this in the list. So before that, we have to declare a list. Lead, lead list, new list, lead, and then closing back. Here inside the lead list, we are going to add all the list items. And finally, we are going to update the lead list. So this is what we are doing here. First of all, we queried all the, all the records and then these records which we have received in or fetched in our start method are then passed to the execute method where all the batches, all the records are first processed here. Once we have all the records updated, then it finally goes to the finish method one and only the last time. Now here uh, you can execute any finish method like sending email or any post processing step, right? So we are not doing anything over here. Uh, let's just move ahead and create the test class as well. We'll test this also, but after uh, first we'll move to test class and then we are going to come back here and test this or see this in an implementation. Let's move ahead and see uh, the next thing we have to do is create the Apex test class, copy this name, go back here, new Apex, paste this name here, okay. Now here we have to specify using the is test annotation that this is a test class. After this, we are going to create a test setup method. So first of all, at the rate test setup, we have to use these annotations. Then static void test, or just say setup. This is the name of the method. Here in the setup or test setup method, basically we create this. So if so, right now this is this will be a very short test class. But in case of real world scenarios or when you work actually uh, on the long Apex classes and create test classes for them. In that case, there are uh, some scenarios where you have to create, there are some scenarios where you have to use or create multiple records in different methods. At that point, it's not required to create every time new account record, new lead record, new contact, or any other customer standard object record, you can use this test setup method to create the test data only one time. And then you can use the query to fetch the created data, which you have created in this test setup method. And you can use that uh, by using the query in your different, different methods. So that way you do not have to every time create the object or create the test data. So we are going to use this only. So let's just use the for loop and create the records integer i is equals to zero 
and this will be less than 200 and this is the incremental variable inside this we are going to create new lead record let's first create a list of lead leads is equals to new lead list of lead and then here we are going to create the lead instance variable and then inside this we are going to specify all the required fields that is last name we are going to make this a dynamic test and plus and then i so every time this will be test zero test one test two like this and then company is another required field so let's say it's test company and finally i'm going to give the status field value as well let's say it's um let's go to leads here in the play app launcher and see what values do we have so let's say open not contacted i'll copy this value go back here and paste this in the status field that's all and finally we are going to add this into our list so leads dot add l and after the for loop we are going to use the dml statement to insert all the leads using the list or the collection variable now we are going to move ahead and actually create our method static test method void void let's say process leads test inside this i'm going to write test dot start test test dot stop test and in between this we are going to call our apex class batch class so let's copy this name we are going to create the instance of this class is equals to new lead processor id batch id is equals to database dot execute batch and then here we are going to pass this apex class variable that you have to use this apex class in order to execute so we are using the execute batch to call this apex class now here why we have used this uh way to call this apex class because if you go to your uh, batch class you have uh, if you notice that we are not using static here so for non-static methods we have to always inst instantiate it by using this way like creating the instance variable and then we are using that instance variable over here and we are going to pass the number of records that we want to process that's all now after this we are going to use system.assert so let's just first query list of lead leads is equals to new is equals to select id lead source from lead where lead source is equal to dream force now if everything work fine or the logic in our batch class is correct then in that case we should get 200 records from this query and leads dot size should also be 200 that's all so this is basically uh, once our batch class has been executed it run this logic as well and update all the leads in the database and then this query just simply fetch the records from the database and uh, if everything worked fine if our logic was working fine then it must have up, uh, updated all the records with this uh, lead uh, lead source 
to Dreamforce. And we are expecting, since we have created 200 records, we are uh, giving that 200 records in this query, right? So these 200 records, we are expecting to be updated. So we have, that's why added here 200, written here 200, and we are comparing it. It should be equal to the size of the records that we are fetching from this query. So this is what assert is doing. It just uh, reconfirms or reassures that your logic is working completely fine. Just save this. Now, before we run our class, let's just test this as well. So how we can test this, let's go to debug, anonymous window, move this logic. And here we are going to use, again, instantiate our class, LP is equals to new lead processor, then ID batch ID is equals to database dot execute batch. And inside that, I'll pass LP variable. Now this has uh, two methods, uh, Either you can use LP or you can use the way we, we were doing in our Apex class, passing the count of the records as well. So right now we are not passing the count of records and what I'll do before executing or implementing this from the execute anonymous window, we are going to add few fields over here, go here and let's search for lead source. We'll also add this in this list view so that we can see our data has been updated. So you see lead source right now is different uh, for some records like web purchase list and phone inquiry, et cetera. So once we execute this, it should update all the lead records with Dreamforce. So let's just click on execute. So this got executed. Let's go back here and refresh it. So you see all our records have been updated with the Dreamforce value. So our Apex class logic is working fine. Let's just finally test our test class as well, if it is working fine and do we have the 100% code coverage. So go to test and click on run all. So our test class has been executed or run and it's still, okay. So we have passed it, there are no error. Our assert is also working fine. Let's go back to our Apex class and see what's the coverage. So coverage also is 100%. This is what actually asked in our challenge. So we have made the batch class where we updated all the lead records. We have created the test class lead processor test. We have inserted 200 lead records. And we have also test that all the lead records uh, were updated correctly. We have also, also made sure that our code has 100% coverage. So all of these things we have done, we have also used the developer console run all feature. And we saw that our test class is giving 100% code coverage. That's all. Just click on check challenge button. There you go. This unit is completed. See you in the next video with another unit or module. Till then, take care. Thank you so much.